Thank you for joining me today. I'm in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 6. Now, if you remember the story and the place we are in 2 Chronicles, you remember that uh, 2 Chronicles really talks about the rule of Solomon and when he ascended to the throne of Israel, uh, how he built the temple and he's just getting, getting ready to dedicate that temple uh, to the Lord uh, in this particular passage. And, and here he, he brings into his speech and before the people of Israel that are assembled there, he explains to them how God has uh, prepared uh, not only for the temple and for all of its building, but he, how he has worked down through the years in his father David and even in his own life at that particular time. And it says here in verse, in verse 10, it's interesting that Solomon says, Now the Lord has fulfilled his promise that he made, for I have risen in the place of David my father and sit on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised, and I have built the house for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. Now twice in that passage he says, as the Lord promised. Now I want to suggest to you that yes, uh, he did fulfill his promise there, but I want you also to know that he will fulfill that same promise. Because the promise of David, or the promise given to David back in, the, uh, in, in 2 Samuel and, uh, and in other passages, that promise was that he would have uh, his, one of his descendants sit on the throne of Israel forever. And Solomon was not that one. Solomon was the one who, uh, after he built the temple in his later years, he fell into idolatry through the many wives that he had, uh, that he had married. But, uh, but there would come one descendant of David who was going to sit on his throne forever. So in this particular passage, even though, excuse me, even though Solomon says this is past tense, that he has fulfilled this, please understand that it is, there is a greater fulfillment that will happen later on. Many times as we look at prophecies and prophetic passages in Scripture, we have multiple fulfillments, and, and many have described these prophetic uh, uh, events as being similar to uh, driving toward a mountain range where we see a, a, a group of mountains here and then behind there there is another group of mountains and behind that there is another group of mountains and we can see all of those what we don't see is the distance between those different ra mountain ranges that are behind and the very in the very same way many of the prophecies of all of the Old Testament have a fulfillment that is uh, is immediate or in that particular day for, uh, for the people of Israel or Judah. But sometimes there is a greater fulfillment later on. And so even as we look at many of the prophecies of, uh, of Messiah, we recognize that there was an immediate fulfillment. As we see right here in 2 Chronicles 6, Solomon ascended to the throne of David and he built the temple just as David predicted and just as God promised. But what Solomon doesn't understand or at least doesn't mention here is that there would be a greater fulfillment later on and a descendant of David was going to sit on the throne of Israel forever, eternally. Now, please understand that at the time that Solomon was writing here, there was a good chance that it was going to be Solomon's own descendant. But of course, he rejected the God of Israel and he turned to idolatry. And so in God's providence, that descendant came through one of the other sons of David. But the, but the promise at that particular time was that there would be a son of David. It didn't say necessarily that it was going to be one of Solomon's descendants, but it does say that it's going to be one of David's. Now again, Solomon was told, if you are faithful, 
that descendant that's going to be there forever will be one of yours. But, of course, we recognize that he was not. And so it came through a different line. My point, merely, is that, uh, yes, God fulfills his promises, and he fulfills them in the immediate context, even as he talks. But he also sometimes fulfills them later on. And we see that in a number of different ways as we look at the Old Testament uh, as it prophesies the end of time and the time of Jacob's trouble and all of that. And yes, there was a fulfillment in the time of Jeremiah as they went into the Babylonian captivity, but there will be another fulfillment and that will happen at the end of time just before the return of Christ. So I, I urge you, Take note, take note. He has not abdicated his promise, even though he fulfilled that here in the time of Solomon. Father, I praise you and I thank you that those promises are yea and amen in Christ. I praise you and I thank you that we can look forward to Messiah sitting on the throne of David forever and ever. And we praise you that he will do that not in a a uh, figurative or symbolic way, but literally he will sit there and we rejoice in that provision you've made. So bless us and help us to keep our eyes fixed upon him. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. Have a great day.